As warmer temperatures become the norm in our society, a unique and very important part of our ecosphere is disappearing. Health officials say heat waves are the deadliest extreme weather event. It's simply unbearably hot. Sweltering heat wave conditions continue in India, impacting the life of millions of people in various parts of the country. During the last decade, more than 150 people died from heat stroke in New York City alone. The earth is getting warmer. On an average, it is already 0.8 degrees hotter than what it used to be in the pre-industrial times. And it doesn't stop here. Studies indicate that it will further heat up by 2 degrees or more by the end of the century. We are aware that the temperatures are rising. And obviously, if we do not take any uh, precautions against all of these or, or any actions to sub circumvent all of these, then um, it will have uh, effects in terms of our health, in terms of uh, the comfort levels that we are used to living out of. And third, it will directly impact our outputs, both at work as well as at homes. Simply put, it will become way too hot for humans. Maybe not as much for people who have easy access to air conditioning. But wait a moment, what about those who don't have access to cooling technology or the money to pay hefty electricity bills? Or what if the supply of electricity is not reliable? In a fast-changing world, everyone needs to do something to protect themselves from heat. An ideal solution should be the one without high energy inputs. Scientists at the Wageningen University and Research in Netherlands and the Energy and Resources Institute or TERI in India are working on solutions that might be applicable to a large segment of society. Their focus is on heat stress management in the city of Delhi. Similar assessments are also being carried out in Bangladesh and Pakistan by partner organizations. In 2016, we started mapping different parts of Delhi. We installed this device on top of a car and drove around different areas. These areas that we covered included congested areas, areas with heavy traffic and larger greener areas. And simultaneously, we had installed an indoor temperature monitor which locked temperature within the low-income households. This small alien-looking device mimics the functions of a full-fledged weather station. It not just collects heat data, it also records wind speed, wind direction, humidity and solar radiation. Small devices were also installed inside houses of different income groups to collect the indoor heat data. When we were looking at these three different sets of data sets that we were able to collect during the study, we observed interesting trends of very high temperatures within the houses, in congested zones, etc. And uh, we felt uh, there is a need to look at these areas more closely to see what kind of possible interventions can be planned. The most striking um, result we had there is um, the differences between actually richer neighborhoods and poorer neighborhoods. So. Um, Ironically, the poorer neighborhoods were about three to four degrees warmer than the richer neighborhoods. So the reasons for that are that the, the, the richer people, the higher socioeconomic class, they live usually in the more greener area, more spacious area, whereas then the, the, the slum neighborhoods are typically situated in, in, um, in very congested places. And this is what a typical poor neighborhood looks like. Small houses that are made up of bare single brick walls covered with either tin or corrugated cement sheets. There are hardly any windows for ventilation, making these houses as hot as a furnace. हम अभी अहमदाबाद शहर के अमरेवाड़ी विस्तार में खड़े हैं यहां का टेंपरेचर 48 डिग्री से भी ज्यादा तक पहुंचता है आप देख सकते हो कि हर एक बस्ती का हर एक घर की जो छत है वो छत टीन सीट से बनी हुई है टीन सीट से घर बनने बने हुए हैं इसकी वजह से जो बाहर का टेंपरेचर है उससे भी घर के अंदर का टेंपरेचर बहुत ज्यादा रहता है उनके घर के अंदर आप भट्टी में जैसे जल रहे हो वैसा आप महसूस कर सकते हो ये गर्मी का कुछ ना कुछ उपाय होना चाहिए और इसीलिए हम लोगों ने मॉड रूफ के बारे में अभी सोचा this family is getting rid of the tin roof and getting a mod roof installed, hoping that they will be able to use the small room on the first floor. Mod roof is a simple technology that can bring down the indoor temperatures drastically. 
ये शीट इस तरह से डिज़ाइन करी हुई है जिससे बाहर की गर्मी अंदर नहीं आती तो आप मतलब गर्मी के टाइम इसमें आठ से दस डिग्री तक टेम्परेचर डिफरेंस रहता है तो काफ़ी अच्छा इंसुलेशन मिलता है पहले मेरा घर बिल्कुल अंधेरे सा था जैसे और गर्मी भी बहुत थी बाहर से हम आते थे घर के दरवाजा खोलते ऐसा लगता था जैसे कितने और मतलब गर्मियों में घुस गए लेकिन अब थोड़ा हवा सा लगता है अंदर आने में अच्छा लगता है घर में रोशनी भी होती है उससे और अच्छा लगता है मॉड रूफ कैन बी इंस्टॉल्ड फ्रेश और रेट्रोफिटेड बट ओनली इन द होम्स दैट हैव टिन रूफ्स फॉर हाउसेज विद कॉन्क्रीट रूफ्स देर आर सिंपलर येट इफेक्टिव सोल्यूशंस हमारा घर में बैठा नहीं जाता था इतना गर्मी होते थे जैसे थोड़ा जैसे धूप बहुत ज़्यादा तापमान बढ़ जाते हैं तो उसके लिए हमें घर में बैठना मुश्किल हो जाते थे तो संस्था वाले आए तो आके कह रहे कि आप इतना गर्मी में बच्चे लेके कैसे रह पाएंगे तो हम इसको वाइट पेंट करते हैं वाइट जैसे पट्टी तो हमने बोला कि ठीक है सर कर दो ये ज़रा देखिए ये इसमें हाथ ला के कितना गर्मी हो रहा और अब इसमें जो वाइट पेंट करा है सर इसको हाथ ला के देखिए कितना फ़र्क है इन दोनों में सर There are several solutions for the middle income group that can afford a higher construction bill. Mr and Mrs Koch live in a standalone house just outside New Delhi. Their home is an ideal case study when it comes to managing indoor temperature. For most part of the year, their house requires minimal or no cooling. It is because they opted for smarter construction technologies. The walls of this house are made of aerated concrete blocks now i have one in my hand it's very light and you can see the pores and so what the, what this means is that actually it's full of air and it's the air that gives it insulation and since it's very light in comparison to regular brick therefore structurally also it is safer now the surface that you see are tiles the inside all the walls are made of various concrete blocks okay so all the doors and windows in this house are upvc with vacuum because of the vacuum there is no heat transfer because of conduction or convection in most concrete houses the sun's rays they fall onto the roof and then they are transmitted directly below into the house so the house heats up In this house what we have are white tiles which reflect most of the sun's rays and below the white tiles we have polyurethane foam which prevents any heat that has gone through the tiles from getting into the house. The next level of adaptation is at the city scale that includes a lot of interventions at the administrative and policy level. What is needed is more greener spaces, open spaces, water bodies. so that the heat is absorbed and they serve as sinks for heat uh, apart from that there is a need for focus on uh, uh, regulation for the low income households and settlements uh, because that is an area that is clearly lacking uh, wherein uh, you know we do know that a large proportion of population is going to be settled